It's so good to be with you today, worshiping with you. So I want to start off today by asking a question. So when in life do you get it all figured out? When I was uh, in high school, there was a high school project, a research project that I was uh, told to do. And this project was all about determining what career path you would take. This was the project where you would find out whether or not you'd want to be a blue collar or a white collar. And I had no idea I'd be wearing the clergy collar. But man, it was so intimidating and so humbling, especially as I looked at all those possibilities in front of me. What was I going to do? What was I going to become? I had no idea. I, I went through all of the, uh, uh, all of the possibilities and uh, looked at all of the starting salaries, and that was humbling. And, but man, if I had the chance to go back, I would want to go to that kid and tell that kid that it's okay, that life's a journey. It's going to be a while. You're not going to be able to figure out everything all at once. Well, for all of us, we, uh, we're on a journey. Some of us are just starting out. There are so many possibilities out there, so many avenues for us to take, which on the one hand is exciting, it's great, it's, uh, I mean, the, the world is open to us, and so, Lord, what direction do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And then, on the other hand, it could be very daunting because, God, what if I get it wrong? Now, some of us are a little bit farther down the road in our journey. A lot of the decisions we've already made you know, we made a decision for better or for worse, if you know what I mean. Uh, and not just in who we would spend our life with, but also in so many ways, we've made our decisions already. And so some of us are looking back and maybe some of us are doing some second guessing. Some of us are happy with the decisions that we made, but we're in the middle of the road. So maybe there's some other choices that we can make. Maybe there's some big life decisions in front of us. And then there's that last group of people where the journey seems like it's come to an end. And so if that's us, we're looking back on our life and we're looking at some of the great decisions that we made and some of the things that we would never, ever decide to do again. Uh, but we're all in different stages. Some of us just starting out, some of us somewhere in the middle, some of us at the very end of life. But for all of us, sometimes we all feel lost along the way. And, and that's okay. You see, that's the thing about just being able to be honest before our God. Sometimes we do not know what's next. We don't know if we've made a good decision. We don't know what's ahead. That, to me, is what all of us are experiencing during this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, for some of us, our life has changed drastically. For others of us, I know that it hasn't changed a whole lot. But I think for, for all of us, kind of a fog has descended upon our ability to see down the road a little bit. We don't exactly know what to expect. We don't know when we're all going to be able to return to life as normal. And that's frustrating, and that can give us a sense of stress. We've been forced to take on some things that we didn't want to take on, making adjustments and transitions, so we don't know. But if that's the case, you know, join the club. We really are in that same place in life together. So for Christians, what do we do? Well, we turn to the Word of God. The Word of God says in Psalm 119.105 that the Word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. And so uh, we get direction from God's Word. I want to introduce to you today the first of the scriptures that will help us figure out kind of what to do when we don't know what's next in our life. And so that's in Jeremiah 16, or verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 16. And I just want to mention a few things to you about this wonderful verse because we're in this moment where we are at a crossroads in life. For a lot of us, life has really come to a standstill. Things have stopped. Things are different in a lot of ways. So here's that crossroads verse. And this is what the word says. First, stand at the crossroads. Look. Look at the possibilities. Look at the different roads that we can take. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is. And then walk in it 
and you will find rest for your souls. You see the words stand and look and ask and walk in it and then find. This is a perfect chance for us during this time of uncertainty to stand and look and just ask yourself or ask God, God, where do you want me to go now in my life? Some of us are reevaluating certain things in our life. Now, this is an important point to bring out from verse 16 of Jeremiah 6, where the world has its view of one way to find direction in life. The Word of God has a different way that goes about it all the time. And this is found in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, in the phrase, ask for the ancient paths. See, the world would say, look for the newest path. Look for the path that is the latest path where the Bible says, I want you to look for the ancient path. You can look at the word ancient in one of two ways. You can look at it from a negative perspective, as in this ancient, worn out thing of the past kind of thing. Or you can look at the word ancient as a pathway that is timeless. That a pathway that God has determined for us to find rest for our souls in. You know, that's That is it right there. Between finding the latest, you know, uh, thing that you discover and finding something that's been revealed to us already. Some people would say to us, look, life is a journey. There's all these roads to take and it's up to you to find out which road to take. But the Bible says, actually, stand, look, and ask for the ancient, the original pathway that God has in mind for us pathways of righteousness and goodness and of mercy and of love and walk in it commit to what the scriptures say commit to living for God and what's the promise there you'll find rest for your souls now for those of you who know the bible well you probably had a bell that went off in your mind because you thought to yourself that sounded kind of familiar that reminds me of another verse yes when Jesus said it In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. If you come to Jesus, his promise is you will find rest for your souls. That's exactly what Jeremiah 6 verse 16 is talking about. Jesus is one upping from our relationship with God in the Old Testament where we have to stand and look and ask for the ancient paths, Jesus says, look, I'll make it real easy for you. Come to me and I'll show you the way. God is sending his one and only son to us to actually be our guide for us where Jesus just gives the promise, look, If you enter into a relationship with me, I will give you the guidance that you need every step of the way, and I will also be your power in it. That's quite a thing. All right, so have you made that choice for your life where you've asked Jesus to come in and to be the Lord and Savior of your life? When you're looking for direction in life and what pathway to go, you can't figure it all out, so invite him in and let him be your guide. But I just want to encourage you that though uh, I know that you want Jesus to give you all the answers and I know that you don't want any problems in your life ever again and you don't want any more COVID crisis in your life, you don't want any death in your life, no sickness, no problems, that's not what is promised for us. You know, the thing about our journey is that we'd like it to be one straight, clear path, but our journey is never that way. We're going to face some difficulties. We're going to face some challenges ahead, and we won't know what is going to happen, just like in our situation today. Now, some others uh, in the time of Christ faced that same situation where Jesus invited them, and he said this to the disciples. He said, come follow me. And so that the disciples did that, and they found rest for their souls. But that did not end all of their struggles. And there was a time in the disciples' lives where everything just came unglued for them. They unraveled. And that was at the height of what 
gave Jesus the most glory when he died on the cross for our sins and when he rose from the dead. But for the disciples, when they heard about Jesus' plan, they didn't understand it, they didn't like it, and they were scared. And they got very depressed. And they were upset. They, they even uh, became angry with Jesus. Uh, they failed Jesus at that time. Well, Jesus uh, wanted to give the disciples direction. And so he said in John 14, he said, trust in God. Trust also in me. And uh, he was telling them, look, I'm going to go away. Now, I'm not going to abandon you. Um, but he says this. He says this in verse 4. He says, in John chapter 14, he says, you know the way. You know the way. Now, out of those disciples, the one that was most vocal about his doubts was this guy named Thomas. And so Thomas says in verse 5 to Jesus in response to when Jesus says, you know the way. Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And this is where Jesus really lowers the truth for us, sets the truth upon us. This is a moment, even in your life right now, to believe. Would you have faith with me? When Jesus responds to Thomas' concerns, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is saying, listen, I know that you're concerned about where I'm going. I know that you don't know what's ahead. And this is very appropriate for our times. We're saying to God, Lord, how can we know the way? How can we feel a sense of security when we don't know what's going to happen? And Jesus says to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When Jesus says, I am the way, he's saying, you might not know what's ahead, but when you're with me, you know that you're on the right path. Jesus says, I am the truth, meaning I am the essence of what is true. I am the source of all truth. I know exactly which way I'm going. I know what is right, and I can lead you. I am the way and the truth. And then he says, I am the life. I am the source of all life. I'm the essence of what life is. Look in my eyes, and I will give you life. As you trust in me, as you follow me, as you ask of me, as you obey me, I will bring you through a relationship with me the life that you want. Then he says something even more extraordinary. He brings it up another level when he says, as a matter of fact, I am the only way, truth, and life. His challenge is our faith. This really does because Jesus is not just being a good teacher here. He's being God in the flesh. He's being the great I am. And he's saying, oh, by the way, no one comes to the Father except through me. He's challenging us to have a relationship with him where we look to him and him alone to be our life, to be our truth, to be our way. Why? Why is he doing that? Because he wants us to live with a joy-filled guidance. He wants us to have a guidance system that will never let us down. He does not want us to walk in the wrong path. He does not want us to walk in doubt. He wants us to know that when we turn to him, he can give us all of the answers that we're looking for. Jesus says in John 10.10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So Jesus is bringing us a blessing in this verse when he tells us the truth about his very essence, about the I am of Jesus being our God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus does not want us to be robbed of a joy-filled life. And this COVID pandemic that we're in, this can bring us down because it can fill us with all types of issues, all types of questions. Am I going to get the COVID Christ? Am I the COVID-19? Am I going to get sick? And if I get sick, will I be okay? It's made us think about dying and death. It's also especially made us be concerned for our loved ones. Well, I'll be okay if I get it probably, but what if I pass it along to somebody else? 
There's also other questions. I mean, you know, the economy. Will my job be there when I return? What's going to happen next? And so these are the questions that we're asking. And Jesus, he's giving us a message of encouragement today. Here's the question. When, when in life, when things are so different, when we can't enjoy the same good relationships that we once had, when we can't enjoy knowing the road ahead, when we can't enjoy the routines that we like to get into, will we still find life in Jesus Christ? So we, we are at a crossroads here. This is a crossroads moment in life. This is where we stand and we look and we ask for the ancient path. Jesus is that ancient path. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Where we hear Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Can you memorize that verse? It's John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hear Jesus saying, look, you might not know what's next, but you know the way. You know the way. I am the way. The way is a person. The way is Jesus. Hear him say to you, friend, I am the way, the truth, and the life, to trust in me. Again, you on your journey, for some of you, you're just starting out, you're not sure where life is headed, you feel like everything has come to a halt, or maybe you're in the middle of your journey and you're wondering what's next, or at the end, you're still having to make choices for life or choices that lead to death. Which choices are you going to make this week as you find yourself insecure and uncertain? What are the choices that you can make for life? Jesus is right here with you now. Life is here. Life is now. So pursue him and find out ways this week that you are going to worship your God. You say you're stuck, you're bored, you don't know what to do. What about dev devotions? What about getting into the scriptures more or getting into interceding on behalf of others more? What about ways in which you can give more to others and you can pray more to others? What about ways you can share your faith with others? What about ways that you can grow up instead of turning to things that lead to death and bad habits forming, you can start to form good habits in your life. Life is here and now. What choices? will you make? I want to lead you with just one final thought because I know that in this week ahead, things might get worse. We might have greater stress. We might have greater trouble. I know in our congregation right now, a beloved a sister in Christ, Charlene Dabas, is struggling for her life because she's got COVID-19 and, um, and the Lord is, is going to take her soon. So I know that we don't know what's next. And I know that there's going to be struggles in life. But I want you to know that no matter what you feel, the facts are, is that you, if you are in Christ, you are not lost. You know the way. Would you bow your head with me? Heavenly Father, we, we want to wrestle with this, this word that Jesus gave to us today saying to look to him and to look only to him for life. Lord, I pray that as a people, we not get distracted or discouraged, that we not be filled with complaints. But if we are filled with complaining and doubting, that we would look to you and find life in you. Thank you, Lord, for being the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, amen.